Hello, everyone. Kurt Olfer here, and welcome back to another episode from Hope Fighter Labs. Today, we're continuing on with Fourth Master Dagger, and we are going to be finishing the Fourth Master Dagger section in regard with, with by our look at the counter to it. Now, interestingly enough, this, just like in Third Master, shows up at the end of the section. And we'll see that also in other plays as well, but I think it's interesting here because essentially this right here is talking so much about if, some, if we notice it, we take action immediately. Fourth Master Dagger has also got some things in there that also are very interesting to see, in my opinion. And I'll be talking about how Fourth Master itself is actually very, uh, you know, all the plays of it are counterable into other areas. And we'll be looking at that. So with that being the case here, let's get into it. Okay, so for this week here, we're going to be talking about um, shifting into countering Fourth Master Dagger, okay? And there's only one counter that is shown within the Getty, which is the manuscript I'm looking at right now. Um, and the big part about it that's very interesting about it is, 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 again, in my opinion, it works off of initial covering. So if this is a person right here that is messing with you, there are other things that you can utilize as far as counters are concerned. This is where if you understand your first Master Dagger stuff, you know how to counter some of the fourth Master Dagger stuff. But the big part about this is, is as we're moving into this, it once again has to be off of the initial immediate so in this case right here, so say he starts getting me into like into, into a figure four lock, into this. In this case right here, the only option I have if I'm going to try to get anything is get into the cover that we see within the first the first uh, uh, first master plays of Alfred. Sorry, um, where I come across right here and I bring myself down. The other side, where so if it's if it's the other way that he wraps in. So into this right here, again, it's got to be the same thing. It may be, it's deeper for me. It's hard for me to get into there. Maybe I pass backwards, regardless of this right here. Ultimately, the big thing that I'm talking about is, again, a similar concept. And again, none of this is in the fourth Master Dagger section. These are all previous Master Dagger positions. And I'm bringing these up first because before we get to the fourth Master Dagger, the point is if you're trying to counter off of the initial grab of fourth Master Dagger. Not where they flow to. But again, dagger is continuous, as we're going to see with sword and all the places right here, and things that we may or may not be able to do when it comes down to um, different plays. Okay? So other things right here, maybe he grabs my dagger, right? So we talked about this before last week right here. He comes across. I'm going to grab this and turn this right into his wrist. And that really sucked immediately right there. He's like, wow, that really sucks to go to my hand. Similar concept before. Or in this case right here, I fall back with this, he makes post to longa, and he goes towards the leg. If we remember the countering mechanism, I sweep out of this, and I grab his arm, and I'm pushing this into his face. So again, what are we seeing here but other master plays? Fourth master dagger's uh, play is specifically vicious. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to have him do it as well. We're going to start with this, and then we're going to show up close why I think this is just absolutely horrifying, okay? So from the fourth master play, when he comes in with this right here, the first thing that we're seeing here is maybe I, if the thing is I'm off play right here. He's not figured out what he can do. I got him going. He is not yet. He is, he is finding his forteza. He's finding his, he's working with his visimental, what he has for sensing in this. He can't move any faster with Proceza because the dagger's in place and he's trying to find his audimento. This is a spot right here where as this is happening, if I see it, if my Invisimento is in there, I will have the mindset to bring the dagger here and then press this right into the hand. And you can already tell, it doesn't take much. I'm barely putting this in there. I can already tell, just by turning this, and now I've got ways where I can work and play against. The, the, the counter to this is just folding the dagger over and using either the rondelle or the, me or the, or the dagger portion, so metal on flesh to disrupt, break bones, or once again, if we're talking about a gauntlet, getting to that behind that hourglass shape, that bell, and from here, allowing that rotation piece to go into, into be able to rotate off of him. There's all sorts of things I can do off right here. We're not gonna go into that very much here. And again, this is with wood. Metal, and this has got four sides, this has got three sides, it's not super sharp. Please tap immediately when it happens. So this is in place right here. I'm going to come across. Yep, it does not take much. 
if I if, if I can't get the blade on there, then I'm going to dig this rondelle. His knuckle's right there. I can put all. The, but the thing I want to make sure of is I don't want to turn in like I just did right there. Probably not an idea. Talk about moving away. That much. Now you might be thinking here, what happened? Well, I see that curve, but now what happens when he's got his other hand? You're right. But now I've gone from Andrito to Rovezo. Here, I push down. I push down this way right here with his hand. He lets go of his hand right here. Maybe he grabs my shoulder. That's great. Because as I do this right here, I put it into the groin where he tells us, and that tells us the reveso. So as you're assaulting into this, you have to experience also the concept of what you're dealing with. We're going to get closer here. I'm going to, and then we'll, we'll, we'll both be demonstrating this here. So once again, you can see this is not a big, this is not a complicated one. This is one that is very immediate. And if you if you wait, then you have to go to another master play. So Connor gets to beat up on me here. Get a little bit closer. So we're here in this position here. All he's going to do is he's going to drop that down to there already that sucks and now this pushing into my hand here it really hurt like i said that's the back of my hand good because this is training against the back portion of my hand against the gauntlet piece as i have this strikes down to this is it's hooking my wrist into position again we're looking at the potential of the hour shaped glass or the bell whatever you want to talk about right there which now with this right here if he decides to pull and pry with this that's allowing my wrist to break backwards because my hand is all one metallic piece okay but if it's unarmored right here, he's gonna dig that right in as hard as he can to my wrist here. Good, that's all it takes. With the metal, in position right here, he comes down, drops it down. That's, I can already feel like this is already sucks. And that right, yep, there we go. It's already enough. It's already enough to feel that portion into the back of the hand. Mm -hmm. We're not doing a lot of power on this. We're working off of immediate action of that. So that concludes the counter to fourth master dagger. And just to go through this again here, and I encourage you, dear viewers, please, uh, again, with control consideration, explore where you might find yourself with other master positions, okay? Remember, it's not about how hard you go, it's about where you can find that. And that's a big part about this. Remember, off of this first, off of the first portion right here, I'm in. If I don't respond immediately and do this right here to control him into his wrist, maybe I turn away. That's another part that's nasty about this. I can grab right here. I could step and turn and break his wrist. All sorts of horrible things. If, if I don't have that, then off of this, whatever he chooses to do, so maybe he goes into this. Now I'm into utilizing the counter position that we've seen with against Ligadura or that figure four. Other concept right here. Maybe he decides I, I come back. He's coming into this right here. I step back into this, allows into this, allows me to stab into uh, the upper bar right here. I, I, I retract again, and he goes into longa. And now he's going for the leg. And I've worked myself once again into that kind of countering mechanism. All of these right here, it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm sorry, one more. The, the blade grabs. So coming right here, whether he, so remember he's going to backhand this with the hand here. As soon as he does this and grabs onto this, I'm going to grab right here and turn it into his own wrist. Whether that comes into the body going this way, it doesn't matter. All the other master counter plays here are available. We're just saying that when we get into play, into context, more ways of achieving that are, are there for us to take. So that concludes it for fourth master dagger. Um, again, please train safely with this out there. Remember, this is not a, a modern day self-defense course. This is a look at historical martial arts. Do some of these things bleed over? Absolutely. But again, if you're trained with somebody, make sure that you do the safe, controlled, or work with a martial arts instructor. And uh, that's what we got here for Fourth Master. So you can see with the video, once again, when I talk about immediate, uh, we're not talking about taking the shot off immediately. You're, 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 it, it, again, to me, it's a matter of visimento. If I don't have the awareness that this is happening, then somebody's going to counter me. Somebody's going to counter me, and I'm in trouble. So this kind of play right here when it comes down to dagger work is it is showing once again how we can utilize the dagger in another form or fashion to cause pain compliance to somebody. In many ways, I almost kind of see this as like, once again, kind of getting into a third master scene where I can turn over or strip away, all sorts of things. As I stated too in this, you'll notice that essentially if you're wearing a gauntlet, this also makes it so that you can break the person's wrist. 
Um, I'm looking at this right here, and it comes down to, you know, and again, it doesn't say anything here in regards to, I'm sorry, if they are well armored, I'll mess you up for sure. Sorry, look at the long section. If your wrist locks like this because of the hourglass shape of the wrist protection on the gauntlets at the time, it's a bad day, and you're, you're breaking your wrist inside your armor. So that's a big part about uh, this kind of usage of the dagger there. If the person's unarmored, then you're just grading the back of hand, as I stated in there. The other thing that's interesting about Fourth Master that I absolutely love, and it's one of the things right here I love to train, is because Fourth Master allows us to train, to retrain earlier concepts, First Master counters that we saw against someone stopping the dagger. So off of Fourth Master Dagger, we know we can push this things about taking away the dagger. All the things we saw in there about how we counter it, we roll back and we see it's right there available for us. So even if you don't get to do this for the, the, the Fourth Master counter, which is the grabbing over, even if you don't get to do that, there are still counters that get you out of it. Unlike Third Master, if I don't do this immediately here, I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm, I'm in a bad way. With Fourth Master, there's now things in there that once again show us how we can contend and move with this. This leads me to a deeper hypothesis that essentially when you look at any of Mantrito and Destreza side attacks throughout the entirety of the manual, is there a priority of action in which Fiori wants you to do? Personally, and this will go much more into the sword section, about how I see how he makes his crossings of the sword. It's not a straight thing, it's into the blow, or as the blow becomes less. And we'll be talking about that here extensively before we even get into any of the plays of, of I mean, before we get into any of the techniques and concepts of Fiori's longsword section. Um, so understand that those are big concepts right there that we're starting to see here in Dagger, huge lessons. Stopping someone here is a great way to tie up their arm. As they pass to the other side, this is very strong. However, if you stopped, you're in a lot of trouble. So again, what does this teach us? Strong here, this is a spot to stop somebody, and as they're coming through. These are two, two spheres, is like right by the person's head, in those striking areas, that we're trying to counter with. This is gonna be a huge part that happens later on in the manual as we go down and break down some of the concepts that he's talking about. So again, fourth master, super interesting, super dynamic, and also love how much it goes back and forth even into earlier concepts. You can make first master plays with this. You can make second master plays with this. You can go into third master plays with it. Fourth master, in my opinion, is a huge gateway in across all first three masters out there. And as we start going into the next ones, the later ones here, Fourth Master itself, even though it's talking about this, I don't think it's talking about just this. It's talking about how we make this hand shape to other areas. And we'll probably, not, not probably, we'll see that later on in other plays within the dagger sections just later on. But with that being the case here, for this, so here's this wrap of this video. Um, very curious to hear what people think about this right here in regards to if you practice Fiori, what do you see with Fourth Master Dagger? Are you seeing the same things I'm seeing out here? Uh, how much, when it comes down to continuation of different master plays here, are we seeing how these kind of roll and foam into other things? Um, are, what was your thoughts about when he makes this cover? Is it just top onto the back of the hand here? Has anyone experienced the back using a gauntlet against somebody in this capacity? Love to hear your thoughts. Love to hear your considerations. And if you're trying this, remember, please, especially this one here, be careful when you do this. Because like you saw, it didn't take much for me to go, yep, that's too much. Um, uh, because you're talking about all these things right back here and you can, you can control the wrist. So if you're training this at home or working with somebody, please be safe. Remember, not a modern-day self-defense course. Not a modern-day self-defense course. A look in time of history, okay? And whether you are training this just to observe and appreciate history, or if you're doing this for other purposes out there in regards to like athleticism and being able to make yourself strong and stuff like this, understand you can't do that if you don't got training partners. <laughs> so... Um, with that being the case, that's going to wrap up the video. Like and subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. Love to hear you. Love to hear your thoughts. Share with a friend. Want we'll to make the channel grow here, and that is not possible without viewers like you. So thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, everybody, until I see you next time, stay safe out there, train well, and fight on. I'll see you all soon.